Yo, what up? It's your boy, J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. And obviously, you can see I have a guest with me, the one and only E-Rock. What's up, E? What's happening, dude? I like the jerseys. Rocking the Kelly Green, but rocking the old school Wilbur Montgomery Kelly that, Green. I respect oh, see, it. Yeah, you already know what it is. So two things. One, I have so much old school Kelly Green. This is my one of my dad's favorite players. Um, so I, I just got this a long time ago. My dad was, I got my dad a couple of jerseys for a birthday. And he was like, he was like, get, go, go get us some Montgomery's. Go down there. You know what I mean? Get, I was like, those are, the Mitchell. I was like, my, are you sure? He's like, yeah. So, so I got one for me and got one for him. Um, and I, I broke it out for you because uh, nobody has more Eagles gear than you. I'm going to tell you that <laughs> right now. I don't I, I I don't know what kind of like extra house situation you got going on or a back cave situation, but you I know you got every hat, jersey, t shirt, sock <laughs> gear available to wear. You're you're always cleaned up and fresh. I see you out there shopping all the time. Yeah, well, for as much as I have and for as much as I try to keep it fresh and keep it rocking, I'm just trying to keep up with Gail, man. <laughs> Mr. Gale selling his Eagle sessions on Twitter, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep up with him, dude. And it is difficult. Let me tell you. Yeah. It's, it's the crazy part with like just Philadelphia stuff in general. I liked so much of the Philadelphia gear and the colors and the separation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the flyers, the arms, the way it, it like it, we're the same, but like you got your little segments and I like that. So I'm finally at the Imagine point where if I'm you like, lived in Pittsburgh. Imagine if you lived in Pittsburgh. Every day, pirates, the penguins, the steel, every black and yellow. Y'all, that's the only thing you can rock. Okay, so yes, that's terrible. But at the same time, I was just talking to somebody about this because their new jerseys are are dog shit. They're terrible, and the it's just bad. But there's history and vintageness in them. They got that little stupid star and the four rivers thing woven into it. It's all black. So it's all history because, like you said, everything's the same. So there is uniformity in the fact that it's all together. But I'd also get tired of wearing the exact same thing for every single sport all year round. Well, uh, well let me ask you this. So if Philadelphia was to have a universal color for all four, if you count the union, five sports teams, you know, you got the orange and the black and the Flyers, the Phils. Maybe you can throw it a little retro there. Yeah, Eagles green, uh, the Midnight Green or the Kelly Green or the Sick. I mean, if you were to universally uniform Philadelphia color, what would it be? It'd have to be the Eagles colors. Whatever yeah, Eagles want to change their colors to, it it would have to be them. And not only because of, like, quote-unquote winners and heritage, like, the greens are just dope. Like I said, you got the light. You could have... Kelly green, you could have the midnight green, you could have the black and green, black and white, you could throw yeah. a little gray in there. You could do green. so much with it where it would just like, it would feel like intimidating. That is the one thing I gotta say about the Pittsburgh stuff. When they're not rocking all yellow, that black and yellow, it's like, okay, we're not here to mess around. Like, bro, yeah, I mean, I got I get blood on my shirt every day. I don't have time to clean that out of these colors. You know what I'm saying? So if if we had a prominent color, it would have to be whatever the Eagles wanted to say. And the Eagles could dictate to the rest of the city <laughs> what we had to go into. Because, you know, I whenever agree. you see somebody with the uh, Eagles baseball jersey or any, it just looks dope. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, you, sir. Know, you, you did share that uh, that Eagles hat with the star. Like, I don't... Yeah, no, that was a Cowboys hat, but it was in Kelly Green. Somebody brought that to my attention on Instagram, and I, I was like, you got to be kidding. What, is, what even is that? Why? Yeah, why would you do that? That is that is some Fugazi stuff. I was very upset when I saw, like, why why is this happening in the world? But, you know, Cowboys fans are going to do what they're going to do. Um, right. So, we were we, the reason I, I got you on, I was thinking about it, we were just tweeting back and forth real quick about training camp. So, last year... John Ritchie was really upset about the way the training camp has moved and the way Nick Sirianni was doing his training camp. He did not like it. He said one of the best things I remember. He's like, it used to be iron sharpens iron. I feel like it's Charmin, Sharpen, Charmin. And I thought that was hysterical. I don't know if I see the bears with the toilet paper, but it ended up working out in our favor because we went through most of the season without injuries and the preseason without injuries. So that's fine. But this year, it seems like people are crying about Skir skirmishes, back talk, trash talk, and I'm like, you, you brought it up too. Like, what, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, why is this even a story? Yeah, and, and I, I see, I see, I'm starting to date myself here, and and the more I go on with stuff like this, the more I find myself sounding like my father. 
you know, back in my day, back in the, like, listen, man, when there was training camp out in Lehigh and you and I and everybody would make the pilgrimage up to Lehigh University to go see the Eagles, you used to get there early, get in the stands. I mean, you were close enough to hear these guys fart. So you yeah. could hear everything, everything that they were saying. So when I see, you know, or I hear a report about Nick Sirianni chewing out Jalen Hurts, which, by the way, he said he wants to be coach tough. So there it is. Or even the Dak Prescott thing. You know, a lot of people were making a big deal on social media about that. And I just feel like it's a like a generational gap where like, oh, 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 you, you don't understand what actually goes on in training camp. Do you? you don't understand how competitive these guys are. You don't understand that the fact that they've been playing from by and large PB football and talking trash to each other since, you know, before the balls dropped, you know what I mean? So like these guys are just alpha males. They're out there and they're having fun. It's not malicious. I remember Asante Samuel, man, for three hours straight, you could not <laughs> shut that guy up at Lehigh. He was just, Deuce Staley was another one of big, yeah, tra- Deuce, just ch- Deuce, chirping. Deuce, Deuce was crazy. Like the way he, you see him on the sidelines coaching, that's how he, that's how he was. Like, and, but he, yeah. he's more held back now that he's a coach. But when he was like on and popping, like you couldn't, you, you couldn't stand next to him without getting a piece in your ear about what, what yeah. he wanted to do and what he was going to do to you. Yeah, um, even there, there too, was a hard knocks. Go I'm sorry, there, there was a there was a hard knocks with the Detroit Lions where Deuce Staley's running the offense, and I think it was Glenn Glenn some Glenn. Um, I know, I know, you're talking about Cam. Aaron Glenn me. was running Glenn. the defense, and and those guys were just chirping nonstop. And I remember people reacting on social media, being like, "Wow, Deuce is really a trad man." It's like, oh, this is the first time you're hearing Deuce talk. Oh, all right, okay, no, this is old hat. And and I and again, so, like the social media stuff of it, and again, not to sound, I I, I sound like old man too sometimes. I feel like, what are we doing? Because you're so soft. Like, have you never played a pickup game? Like, yeah. I, I could play basketball with my brother, and I hated him, and I talked about him like we didn't have the same father. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I disrespected this man while we're balling, and then we go out and have dinner and, and watch yeah. eat ice cream and watch a movie together. That's literally what it's like. It's a brotherhood. Also, on top of that, you got to figure, even if you're an established, he's an established guy. He shouldn't talk like that. There's a young punk out here trying to take your spot. You're one injury away from losing your job, okay? You're one, oh, let me just take it easy during this training camp for somebody else to come and take your spot. Like, they're they're working to get better, and it's nothing compared to, quote, unquote, the way it used to be, and it's still something that has competitive fervor, whether you're a teammate or not. Like you said, the the thing in Dallas, I'm like, oh, that's just disrespectful. He called him the B word. You know, when I was like, okay, there's a difference between uh, Draymond Green calling KD a bitch in a playoff game when he wouldn't pass the ball and everybody wanted to pass the ball in a high stakes environment, as opposed to, I just picked you off wearing training camp, get it together, dude. Cause I'm killing you right now. There's a difference, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a difference. And so, you know, it's something that like people can't understand now. And it, and it really irks me because I'm like, it's not that serious. And it's still sports. It's still football. Like at the end of the day, like these guys are are just trying to make their their bones about it, but now it's like, oh, they got the mic on them and blah blah. Like I said, you would hear kids would be out there hearing it, and they still be out there signing autographs right after. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So no, absolutely. Listen, as a fan base, it doesn't matter whether you're an Eagles fan, a Cowboys fan, a Giants. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not uncommon now in this day and age for somebody to jump on social media and try to make a bigger deal out of something that really isn't a big deal. And so, you know, I didn't want to chime in too much, but when I saw everyone going nuts over the Dak Prescott thing and what Dick said to him, you know, I, I just had to say one tweet, be like, ah, this ain't yeah. the one. This ain't it, the one to pile on. Because it makes you feel some sort of way. And 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 one other thing, I didn't put it in um the outline because my buddy just texted to me. Riviera came out and talked about, and he made a public statement about Eric Vianney being too hard on players and some of the players coming to him like, yo, could you tell him to back off? Could you tell him to ease up? And coach was like, yeah, I told him, but he's still doing what he's going to do. And he went and came yeah. and talked to the guys. He's still being hard on them. So Rivers is like, well, Rivera is like, well, some of these guys came from good programs, elite programs. Guess what? 
you're here in a bad organization with a bad history. He's coming in here being hard on you because he's trying to change the culture. And if you right. didn't come from a championship program, you think he's being extra hard on you. Right. And and it's different than, oh, well, I, I'm I'm used to being tr- uh, coached a certain way. Like how you said about Jalen Hurts wanting to be coached hard. I, some of these guys, even, even the guys don't get it because, like, if you came from a soft environment or you're used to being in a bad organization, you don't understand that a guy is trying to get the best out of you. This man doesn't hate you. He wants you to do your job. He wants you to show up for him so he could show up for you. And my buddy's like, well, why would Rivera put that out in the public like that? First of all, this dude's been saying stuff in the public since he got sick. He he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. And yeah. secondly, it seems like he tried to talk to Eric and just get, tell him to chill a little bit. And he was like, nah, bump that. So you know what? I'm going to go tell the public so I can put public pressure on you to ease up on some of these kids. Because as much as we said we're old school and it doesn't matter, there's also a lot of young guys in there like, yo, I'm making $4 million a year. You can't talk to me like that, bro. Like, I'm not your son. This isn't and, high school ball. And that, and that's one of the plus ones. Whenever Howie goes and drafts somebody from a big program like Alabama or Georgia and stays away from the Jalen Ragers of the TCUs of the world or the Sydney Joneses of Washington and some of these packed, what, like, smaller programs. He finally learned when his you, lesson, thank God. Yeah, yeah, and but, but it's an automatic plus. You know, if it, regardless of the player skill set, there are they already have a preconceived notion that I am in a big program. The spotlight's on me. I'm expected to perform. Nick Saban's been yelling at me and screaming at me for the last four, three, <laughs> four years. So they know what it's like to have the spotlight on them. They know what it's like to be in front of a camera or be in front of a microphone. They know what it's like to be co- coached hard. They've already, there's no lack of expectation on that part. So it's automatically, whenever you're drafting a Georgia player or an Alabama player, you know that A, they expect to be coached hard. B, they know that they are coming in and have to compete at an elite level. That just because you were the best player on a half ass college football team, doesn't mean that we're not going to coach you hard up here at the pros, you know? Yeah, and so two points to that uh, soliloquy. Um, back to the Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni thing. Like Someone's like, oh, he can't be getting in, in Jalen's ear like that. I'm like, bro, first of all, I don't care. what he could, he could cuss him out for three minutes straight. All I know is that Jalen Hurts is the most adult person in that room. He's he's like the second most adult coach on that team. I remember last year when Nick was out there, ah, you know what I mean, holding his jock strap, and Hurts was like, "Yo, bro, calm down, cuz like, um, please, yeah, like, yeah. He's a real he, image." Yeah, he had to like, "Yo, coach, come on." So him hearing that is it's nothing to me. It's it's a it's fugazi. It's like it's nothing. So when people yeah. are like, I'm like, you're not understanding how this man operates or how the team operates. Um, and then the second thing is all those things you said are exactly right, which highlights something extremely interesting to me. Carter is the only one of these Alabama guys that seems to be talking wild and reckless. All the other ones seem like perfect. They seem like four five, eight year vets when they're talking to the media. He's out there like, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm about to be put on my Superman cape, kick people in their chest. I hate Dallas, which, you know what I mean? And I, and I, I hated it so much because I loved it. I was like, oh, he's talking that shit. And I'm like, oh, he shut your mouth. You ain't even done nothing yet. I, yeah. I, my, the fan of me was like, ooh, get him. And then the realist in me was like, yo, man, come, hey, pump, 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 pump the brakes, man. It's like, C- calm down a little bit. He's the only one that seems reckless coming from those programs. Everybody else, you know, Nolan Smith, he's he might as well just retire and go do media. That dude yeah. He is. He is on. I don't know what he went to college for, but his his charisma, his skill. Oh yeah. my gosh, he is. He just on exudes it. it. He just yeah. exudes it. And and now he reminds me of um, uh, Von Miller. Von yeah. Miller puts these glasses on. He's very astute. He's yeah. You know I mean, he's smart. When you hear him talk, he's very funny. But when he's out there, he's trying to kill people. Yeah. And when I'm listening to him talk, and and I watched the, the tape on him play. It, it gives me that feeling like, bro, you, you're you're real smart. You seem too smart to, oh, ooh, you just hit him like that? Oh, God. You want to, <laughs> oh, okay. So, I'm, uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm so excited about, you know, what, what we're about to get into. Uh, what yeah. do you think about rookie wall? Do you think, what do you think about all these rookies uh, on the defense? Do you think they're going to hit a rookie wall? No, because I, because I think, and, and part of the plus one, listen, you draft the players from big programs. 
the the other part of that is you know and 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 I do I, I don't think it was by design. I do genuinely think it was about it, it was by accident. It was about taking best player available. But when you have all these guys from Georgia, you know what I mean? They're going to be holding themselves each other accountable, and that's one of the biggest things in an NFL locker room that you can have is players that can have honest conversations with each other and hold each other accountable. And rookie walls are going to happen, but from a physical standpoint, I think these the Eagles staff will have them ready to go, strength and conditioning wise. From a mental staff, from a mental standpoint, I don't think they have to rely on the staff at all. I think they just have to rely on each other. As long as they stick together, you know, there was clips coming out where it was Malcolm Jenkins and BG and Fletcher Cox and those guys, you know, on the side. You want to talk about tough conversations? Mm. There's mic'd up examples. Of those guys that are like, yo, you missed that play. I'm going to need you on the next one. Um, and just holding each other accountable like that. So to have these guys growing up together literally literally and figuratively from their college days into the pros, I think, will help prevent any sort of rookie wall. And the Eagles' strength and conditioning program and how they take great care of their players, again, circling back around the short practices, I think that's what they're looking to prevent. They're looking to prevent injuries. They're looking to prevent people getting fatigued in in late in the season because this team fully anticipates going to the postseason and they need their guys healthy, available, and ready. Yeah. I So I had a real big bug in my brain about rookie walls because there's so many on defense. And the one thing I had to remind myself, or I don't even think somebody might have said it to me, that we also have a rotational defense. So yeah. – the, the line rotates, even the linebackers now that they brought in two, you know what I mean? It's like the Indama Kansu move last year. Whether you think whatever you think, they're just guys that you can pull in and out. And if one guy is not playing well, another guy can plug in. And they, they've got depth at all the positions. So even the safety, even the nickels, you know. So I think the rotation is going to help that because I feel like every rookie hits a, hits a moment where it's like, man, this is, this is 15 weeks and I've been getting smacked in the mouth every week. But the rotation and to what you said, them a lot of the guys coming from bigger programs and playing deeper into a season uh, should help them. So I, hopefully we don't have that issue. And the veterans we they kept on the team, like, it was like oh, why do you keep these guys? Because you can't have babies running around. You know what I mean? You got to right. have and, and, it. And, yeah. you just, and you just touched on it. Like, like talking about the veteran, let's take it to the other side of the spectrum. You know, Fletcher Cox was struggling in the, in, in the, for the first half of last year. And something that he said, you know, he was getting tired out there. He's a veteran guy. He's a great player, but he's a veteran guy. He can't be playing all those snaps. So what did the Eagles do? What did Howie Roseman do? He goes and gets Sue. He goes and gets Linval Joseph. And all of a sudden, there's a better rotation. And you start to see Fletcher Cox's play pick up. So it's not only the rookie, you know, taking care of the rookies and the fact that they'll be a ro- in a rotation, which will help prevent a rookie wall, but it's also the veterans as well, keeping them with fresh legs and Having that rotation has always been a staple of the Philadelphia Eagles defense since Jim Johnson yes. was here, and it's and it's and it's shown to to, to bear fruit every single year. Uh, who's better, Eagle Cox or Reggie White? Oh, Reggie. Okay, Reggie. Um, and, and, and is that Reggie? Reggie's <laughs> the best defensive end to ever play a position historically. Period. Yeah. Okay. Go. See. It's great minds. Uh, so I can't even put Cox in the conversation because he wore a blouse to the Super Bowl. I am, <laughs> I'm never letting it go, E. I'm never letting it go. I mean, you're a well-dressed man. You, you, I, I, like I said, you be staying clean out here in these streets. You got, you got a lot of videos of extra new gear all the time. My man went to the biggest game of the year, and he wore – my grandma had that blouse. I know she did. I know she had the same one with a big old purple hat. I'll find a picture put them side by side. I'm never letting it go, Fletcher. I love you so much, but I'm never letting it go. He wore Listen, a blouse to the Super Bowl. As a 40 year old, five foot six bald white dude, I am not about to question a black man's fashion sense. That is, that is just, I'll never do it. I agree. It was a little, hmm, that's, hmm. Did you get that from the Oprah collection? Where did you get that? But, 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 but I will never listen. That is not my wheelhouse. I'm, 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 I'm diverting to you on that one. I'll, I'll do it for us. I'll do it for us. <laughs> Whenever you need, you just point at me and I'll bring it up. Okay. Cause I, I'm never letting it go. I'm never letting it go. Um, so, 
uh, open practice. You went to open practice. Uh, yes, Nine million Eagles fans uh, showed up and descended upon the link. Uh, I so uh, OG shout out to OG Wade uh, and his son. He offered me and my daughter uh, tickets to go with them, but I had a family event, so I could not go. Um, but ninety thousand bajillion people, more like fifty six thousand or sixty thousand, whatever it was. Yeah, for a practice. And for a practice that not for nothing, it's a walkthrough. It's a it's a meet and greet. They should just they should really just charge twenty dollars and do a meet and greet and bring like fifty people down to take team pictures with them and then leave. Like it's it's really just a fun party, right? Like I, I don't know how much practicing was going on. Did you see a lot of practicing? It, it was it was a good practice. I mean, it, it, you know, you had your eleven on eleven, seven on sevens. Um, you know, it was a reserve fight. They're not going to reveal anything in front no. of fifty six thousand people so you're going to see the most generic sort of team drills a lot of special teams work it it you know open practice and it you know old heads like us it, it, it's kind of a shame that it devolved into the one open practice that it is currently today but yeah. it's an opportunity for people that you know don't normally get to get down to the link maybe you know to just take a third Ticket the price, the, they, they, they've priced every all the sporting events have priced pe a lot of people out and yeah. it, it's it's sad so you're right it, that's that is a good just even to get in the building to be there right. i mean the upper level had people in it which was you know that was a thing that got me because I, I you know I, I went like two years ago whatever it was last time i went and it was like the lower bowl the midsection and then you might see like 12 people who are up there just hanging out chilling like i, I don't even know yeah. what they're there for they're just here to chill out but it was like forty percent packed up there, which is yeah, incredible. That, that was that I even had to tweet a little video out on that one because again, it's not uncom it's commonplace for the lower level to be packed. That's that's run of the mill. Uh and then normally there's a spillover smattering of people, or maybe the club level is, you know, forty percent filled, and that's where all the spill they get the people who got there late. This time around First level pack, second level was filled up. Third level, like you said, was forty percent full. That's the first time at an open practice that I had seen that many people there. And again, it's just a testament to a the Eagles fans for wanting to show up to a practice. We're talking yes. about practice AI. We're talking about practice here forever. <laughs> but not only that, but there was you know kind of the the event that the Eagles themselves put on, you know, they, they, they have alumni there that are signing autographs, the face pain, the shopping and the, and, and all the events and the different things that they can do out on the concourse. And they really try to make it an affordable family oriented fun night. And, it, and it, it's a good time. It's a good time. So <clears throat> shout out to Jeffrey Laurie. He gets on my nerves sometimes and, and I, and I yell <laughs> and scream uh, about some things that he does when he inserts himself, but by and large, he is one of the greatest owners we'll ever have um, past future. I, I can just say that because he does so many things that aren't just charity, but he gets the players involved. His staff gets involved and they seem to really care and they seem to care so much. I believe that it matters to them, the events that they put on, which yeah. in, in turn makes people want to come out and, and do the things they do. You know, again, we know, Philadelphia is the roughest, toughest, meanest city in the world. If you come there, you're going to get snowballs and Santa Claus. And you know what I mean? It's yeah, da, 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 da. Right. all your level. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like, and, and, you know, all, all, that, all that jazz. And, and at the Bro. same time, we out here crying in playoff games with tears down our eyes. Happy for a win. Sad for a loss. Showing up at four days ahead to wait in line to buy a, a bright green jersey. That I could have yeah. ordered online and had shipped to my house. Bring their kids out, wait in line, and early. The the fans here are a result in an owner that seems to really care, not only about his team but about the community. They do a lot of things in the community, and in return, fans embrace and ingratiate themselves with the team. Um, and I know that all the teams do like their outreach and things like that, but Lori. One isn't a conglomerate like the Flyers have, and you know there's presidents and stuff like that. But there's not one man that just sits there and says, "Look, I love you, Philly." You know the Sixers have Harris, who is the leader of a multi conglomerate pack, and he's divulged himself uh, with that team down there. So we don't think he cares. 
The Phillies are second. Our owner cares. I mean, he he said yeah. he's going to spend crazy money. He's out there spending crazy money. He walks amongst the people at games, you know, during yeah. the bad times. So he he's he's right up there with Jeffrey, but they still don't do the same kind of outreach that the Eagles do. Um, at least not. It doesn't feel the same. But the, he he's second level. But Lloyd, man, I just you know, tip the hat to that guy because we we love him so much and we love the team so much, and he's not taking advantage of that from us as the fans. He's trying Correct. to give and give and give. Uh, so we Correct. get some uh, respect on that. So I appreciate him in general. Um, any, anything else in practice? You see, you see anybody get lit up with their, with their mushroom hats on or uh, any, any spectacular catches? No, I mean, I, if, <laughs> if we're going to give fair, you know, criticism, Jalen probably didn't have his best practice, you know, of, of training camp. Um, there was a lot of uh, you know throwaway balls and quote un- unquote sacks. You're not allowed to hit the you know touch the quarterback, yeah, yeah. lay a finger on the quarterback. But there was a lot of throwaway balls. He did have a nice touchdown pass to uh, AJ Brown in the back of the end zone. Yeah, but again, they're not. You know, ever since remember like the first what was it called? The first like open practice thing at the link they tried. It was called flight night. Yeah, remember flight night. And then, like, Stuart Bradley went down with the torn ACL on flight night <laughs> yeah, for yeah. fans. You know, so they're yeah. not going super hard. So it's kind of And that's why I said judge. they might as well just do it a meet and greet. Like, just do a – Yeah. Where you buy, you know, 60,000 people. Look, I got 70 players, you know, line 30 up on this side, 30 up on that side. Puppy mill, buy, get your thing signed, get a picture, and go on about your day. Because you're right. Uh, the two things that I – because I, I got a live feed uh, to my boy Elliot. I'm 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 logged in on his Google Docs, so I get I get live updates. You know when he's out here uh, putting his little stats, his little notebook. Um, <laughs> we need a punter. We need a punter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the punt guy is, is is fresh out of jail. He done beat his case. Go get him. Nobody's picking him up. Go get me the punt guy. And then uh, Marcus Mariota needs a court case. He needs to go to jail. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't it's, know if he's gonna be the backup. Good. I, I, I saw you hanging out with your boy. Uh, I, I'd rather have Minshew Mania back up in here, okay? Because <laughs> I believe in magic, and I hope you do. I'm rocking around, rolling around in Minshew shoes. I love singing my little Minshew songs. I got like five of them, bro. So bring my guy back because I don't know if Marcus Mariota is it, man. Uh, uh, he is not. He is, he is not. But you just hope that it's one of those backup quarterback situations where this dude never sees the field. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna work for Jalen right there. Yeah, the, it, it's it's and the thing about all the pining we did and do the deal and we got to do we were you know fl- trade a first round this year's first round pick next year's first round pick and Fletcher Cox for Marcus Mariota do the deal dude thank God we didn't do that deal like so that alone sometimes is where I'm like. This is why you shouldn't listen to certain people, because our coach at the time, who turned out to be a buffoon, was trumpeting that so hard that that made me believe. I'm like, I I need it. I saw yeah. what he could do. I need it. And then when he got to yeah. the league, whether it was being in the wrong system with the wrong coach, which does destroy people, you know what I mean? I yep. tell I I, I say something like Alex Smith. He was out there wasting away. One year with Andy Reid, he takes him to the championship game, and I'm like, wow. And then he gets yep. hurt. And then Patrick Mahomes takes the championship. I'm like, okay, so maybe it might have been the coaching. Maybe you just had trash coaching. Yeah. But Mariota is also at the end of his rope, and I had to watch that stupid quarterback show where he basically <laughs> gave up last year. Like, he's like, look, I got a baby. Y'all don't care. Yeah. I don't care. And that attitude is like, well, if you wanted to be a starter so bad, why did you come here then? I, you know uh, I mean? Yeah, I, I, I was watching that. It's so funny. I was watching that, too, with the same sort of impression. Like, you saw – you almost felt like, why? Well, my emotions. Like, why am I starting to like Kirk Cousins? Like, why? Why? He's such a nerd, but I kind of like the guy now. I, I I don't know why. And then for that same, like, on that side with Kirk, on the other side, I was like, why do I hate Mariota now? Like, there's no energy to the guy. There's no fire. Where's that leadership? Where's that? You know, you know, you when you hear you quarterback, you got to be numero uno, dude. You gotta, yeah. you gotta be the man. Everyone's got to command respect. And at 25 years old, Jalen Hurts is light years ahead 
of where Mariota <sighs> ever was at yeah. any point in his career, leadership yeah. wise. Um, so how many kids you got? I got two. Two. Married? Yes. Okay. The reason you like Kirk Cousins is the reason I like Kirk Cousins. I'm single, but I would hope to be married to the mother of my child and live this happy cookie cutter lifestyle. When he was in Washington and I heard he was still driving his uncle's van and it had the shag van and the thing would pull down the bed and he was still going to work and his wife was picking out his clothes. And he was wearing regular clothes and then they put the chain on him and he came out. You like that? I was like, oh, you punk little nerd. I love you so much. You just, a, <laughs> man, you just a little Rudy Scooby McDoo out here. I mean, do, hey, go ahead, Kurt. Go ahead. And then my boy's like, oh, I was like, man, I, I already knew that about Kirk Cousins. He's yeah. literally Clark Kent, who's never going to be Superman. He's walking around. He's got the button up and he's a great guy. But you're never going to win a Super Bowl. You're never going to achieve the higher level of life because you're just a good guy. That's it. There ain't no dog in you. You're just a no. nice puppy. And it, it, everybody yeah. loves puppies. You're a good looking guy. Nice family. Appreciate you going about your business to keep taking these L's and important games on Monday nights because you can't handle the pressure. But that's why you feel that way. You're a family man. And it yeah. makes you feel like, oh, dadgummit. But at the same time, like, you look, people will appreciate this. Like, remember when the sub exploded with the Titanic and people were like, oh, I'm white, but I'm not go down to the Titanic in a subway. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm white, but I'll never be Kirk Cousins white. You know what I mean? Like, like that's, that's white. That's pearly. That's bleach. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's why I call Clark Kent boy. That's just that. That's just that button down, small bill. You know what I mean? All shucks, corn husking kind of guy. You know what I mean? He's going yeah. to run a farm or something when he gets out. Yeah, you're, you're, you know you're Mr. Saying? Rogers looking ass. Get out uh, of here. <laughs> like I said, you, you can't really hate him, but I also don't appreciate him. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you're Kirk Cousins. You made it to the league. You, you know, stole a lot of money. Good for you. You know what I mean? He's like he's like if Ned Flanders had it all. <laughs> Ned Flanders is a great cop. I might I might start using that instead of Clark Kent. Clark's giving him a little bit too much credit. Ned Flanders, highly diddly doodly, sounds about <laughs> right to me. So uh, uh I know you're not a radio caller when when you I got a bat signal out, you know what I mean? Because I'm in these streets. So whenever somebody mentions my name on the radio and I'm not listening, people text me. Uh, whenever you randomly call the radio, I got one friend that texts me. He's like, yo, he rock was just on radio, turn on radio. <laughs> Like, cause he, it's very, he, it's very rare. It's, it's very so, rare when I call it's it. It's so rare. He listens all day long, and he loves yeah. you so much. He's like, he never calls up. So when you do, he texts me. Like last year, he's like, yo, he called the radio. Go to the radio. I'm like, okay. I was like, usually when you call in, it's very specific to something that bothered you or something that's going on directly. Yeah, I, I, I gotta, I gotta be call. riled. Uh, and for yeah. me to listen, I'm busy. Yeah. So for me to sit on a hold for twenty to thirty minutes. Yeah. Outside of a Wawa parking lot. Like, I got to be pretty emotionally invested on whatever the hell was <laughs> just said or disagree with it or have to chime in or give my two cents. Because normally, that's what social media is for. Normally, I'll just yeah. go to so, social media and, and say yeah. what I got to say. And so for me, I'm pre-retired. I got nothing but time on my hands. I mean, I just be sitting out here, you know what I mean, lollygagging around most of my days with nothing to do, you know what I mean, free time. Uh, but... To my point today, they were talking about Jalen Hurts being uh, the the number three overall in the players pick of the top 100, which is a more average representation having to listen to dudes that never really made it in the league talk about why my quarterback isn't a quarterback. So Jack Fritz today was making me mad because he's like, oh, well, I, I think he's like 10th overall. He's not really, you know, he put dumb people ahead of him. And I'm like, dude, these are guys that have played against him, play in the league, made it to the league. And for third. this year, they're saying he's third. They're saying he's the second best quarterback. There's no defuting that because that is the respect that is giving that you earned in the league. And I'm happy that this list comes out and shows that because, again, I'm not putting legacy on it. He hasn't played long enough for me to say, oh, he's right. the best quarterback. I don't know yet. Like, I still, I need time. Yeah. But for the body of work he did last year, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy top five. He earned that. Yeah. He not only did he earn it, he went out there and did it on his own. Cause yes, you're coaching and training camp and all those things, but his mindset and the work he put in the offseason is what got him come back in and also a couple extra weapons. Had him take that jump that he took last year. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I so mean, I'm, it's the off season, and, and, and it's always with the list. And I, I, I've been around this block enough to to no longer give a shit about lists or Chris Sims quarterback rankings. And then <laughs> everyone gets all riled up, and Twitter explodes. And I'm like, I, I could not care less about any of this. It's nice when your guy ends up at the top of the list or, or, or towards the top of the list, and it's very great that you know the the NFL players would vote him number three. But I would be completely indifferent if he was voted number 10, number 20, you know, if he was, if he was like the back half of 50, I'd be like, yeah, that's a little whack, but that's about the most reaction you're going to get out of me regarding any, any sort of off season list. I don't care. It's about what's on the field and it's about Jalen Hurts continuing to improve and showing that drive, which he has, which he has and continuing to get better. Oh, and personally on that note, um, I semi care about lists because uh, you know, I, I love clicks and driving clicks, and I love yelling at people. So when people say dumb things, I like yelling. I called in and yelled at Jack and told him that he was a moron today. So that, that's where I'm at. I, I got time to argue. And I'm combative, and I love it. But I'll also yeah. say I love I love when he's like 10th or 12th. I'm like, yo, keep yeah. that chip on your shoulder, bro. Yeah. Go, go listen to some dude tell you what you can do and how you're not because he's built for it. Now, if it was Carson Wentz, I'm like, I had kid gloves on. I'm like, bro, you're making my kid upset. Like, don't talk to my child that way. You know what exactly. I mean? As opposed to Jalen Hurts, I'm sending him back out on the mat. I'm like, yo, I know they just whooped your ass three times, but you're going to go get it again. Go try yep. again until you win because he can handle it. He yeah, can deal a, with it. He's got a completely different mentality. I mean, look, look back in the offseason – Last year, when he went and sought his own quarterback coach and to work specifically on his footwork, I mean, he recognized, you want to talk about self-scouting or self-coaching or self-motivation? This guy in his offseason, instead of Carson Wentz going and hunting ducks of bear, whatever the hell he does in the offseason, driving his four-wheeler, chewing tobacco, (laughs) dressing up like the woods, you know what I mean? He's out there with the quarterback coach, you know, trying to perfect his craft, trying to Listen, I'm good at this. I need to get better at the things that I'm not so good at. And it showed. It yeah. showed. Like week yeah. one, it showed. And so he, now with he, him he losing nothing. the Super Bowl. He, oh, sorry. He, you're, when they were saying he didn't have the deep ball, his footwork wasn't right. His right. footwork is right. The deep right. ball comes with that. He doesn't have yes. an arm. I'm like, it, it's it's multifaceted, bro. That's one thing that kills me, even by people that know the game. His arm's weak. I'm like, well, what about his footwork? He's dancing in the pocket. And he's not getting set. Now right. that he, all that is stopped, he's set. Man, he's dropping dimes 60 yards down the field on a regular now. But his arms you didn't. Weak. You didn't hear. And listen, I, 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 was, I was part of the weak arm. Not weak arm. I was part of the average arm camp. Like, okay. like I, I, I was like, listen, man, there's, there's certain God-given abilities that you have. God either bless you with a John Elway arm <laughs> or a Chad Pennington arm. Yeah. You know, yes, what I mean, there, there's just, a difference between him and Josh Allen. I, I totally agree on that. No matter, no matter yes, what your footwork you is, you know, they're, 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 <laughs> it, 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 it's just the, the 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 way you're built. And but I also did recognize that, like, if you watch him, okay, a lot of this, the footwork's not right. And once he dialed that in, week one, you didn't hear a single peep about weak arm, nothing, nope. accuracy, nothing. You didn't hear nothing because he worked all that stuff out. Now, the man's guy confetti the wrong color confetti coming down on him as his lock screen which by the way i think should be absolutely noted that that was found out by accident yeah. he wasn't out there saying hey listen i you know oh the super bowl hurt me so much look at my lock screen look at my lights it's it's the right he that was discovered that was found out this man set himself a Daily reminder. How many times do you unlock your phone a day? Think about that. Yeah. Every time that man looks down to check the time, that's staring him in the face. So you don't think that's motivation for him? And again, he's not flaunting that in public. It's not fu- bravado or fugazi no. sort of look at me shit. And when Peter King asked him about it, he was like, yeah, well, yeah I wish that really didn't come out. But yeah, I wish it wasn't it, public knowledge. And I'm not going to answer because it is what it is. And then yeah. the people that were like, oh, well, they said they were passed through. I was like, look. The answer is we move wrong from the Super Bowl. We're in the next season. We're going to try and get another Super Bowl. That's it. That doesn't mean that I don't go to bed at night thinking about that loss and thinking about the motivation that that loss gives me. 
Now I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not in a fetal position over it, but yes, it's in my mind of where I need to go and what I still need to do. It's the same thing that happens when you win a Super Bowl. You win a Super Bowl, nobody comes back next year like, ah, I'm cool, whatever. They're like, no. Either you leave and go get a check at this crappy team, or you stay with this team and you want to win again. So that's where he's at with it. And, and I mean, again, this guy just goes, he's got a, a, a Proverbs book, a, a, a parables book that he just reads quotes out of. So I'm just waiting every week to hear new lines of uh, the world is the world and I'm just living in it. Like kind of stuff just go yeah, from yeah, him dude. because he's a professional. So you're right. I, I wish it never came out. And it's so dumb because it was just like a accidental thing that shouldn't even have yeah. become an issue. Uh, yeah. but that is the social media world we live in. Um, it is. So uh, what you, you got any predictions for to get this season? Like how, how many losses you think just in general? I, I don't know if you're a win loss guy. You just do week by week. Um, I, I, I'm like, I, I, I'm like, yeah. I'm like a four loss guy, like a four or five max loss guy. I'm, 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 I'm right there with you, man. I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't have it penciled in. I never go through the schedule, like game by game, type in yeah. L's and dub. I mean, I used to. But again, I don't need more. Yeah, I don't need more. I don't. I don't need. I don't need more either. I, I, I'm not going to sit here. Uh, last year, I, I did say they were going to go uh, 14, and I said they were going to go 14 and four, or something like that. And I was off because I had too many games because I did my math wrong. But I, I was right about the amount of wins. But <laughs> uh, so now I just go out. Oh yeah, like four or five losses. Because no matter what you think about how quote unquote easy the schedule is, yes. you can get beat on any given Sunday. You got to go out there and play the game. And right. They weren't in, except for like two or three games, those games weren't even close. So when you did have the softer schedule, you they whooped their ass. Like it, they weren't playing around. You know what I mean? Right. I think the Indianapolis game and the Bears game and the Washington game that they lost, obviously, were like a couple of what's going on games where it was like tight. But for the most part, they walk down the field and they're resting their quarterback in the fourth quarter and you get a couple touchdowns and you look like you're within 10 points. Nah, bro. Yeah. Like if we would have kept playing, we would have put up 60 on you. So that being said, coming into this year with a tougher schedule, games are going to be a lot tighter. Yes. Just like how the Super Bowl was, you know what I mean? It might come down to a final drive, and hopefully this team is on the right side of history when it comes to that. But it's not like we're going to just falter down and break down and go 8-8. Eight and eight. I, I can see you know, four or five losses here and there because that's how football works. Yeah. And uh, we're also in the NFC, which, man. Not great. It, it's not a it's great, not a great conference. Not a great conference. Like uh, I, my buddy called me today, and he's like, "Oh, you're gonna watch Hard Knocks tonight." He is a, a Jets fan from New York, living in Miami, and around Dolphins yeah. fans. So he's he's an enemy country, and he's just like, e e "Eagles just Super Bowl," and I'm like, "Bro, you got mm. Murderers Row to deal with. You got Mahomes. Yeah. <laughs> you yep. got Burrow. You got mm. Allen, and those are just the legit three that are mm. with Rodgers as a whatever. They're like Then you got uh, the Herbert. The Dolphins. Dolphin. Well, two, I don't think Tua's going to survive. Tua needs to retire. I don't know if they can protect him. So we're going to see what Tua could do. All the weapons in the world, but it don't matter if your quarterback's on his back. I know he's taking jujitsu and he thinks he's a little midget ninja. I don't know what's going to go on down there, okay? But uh, Herbert and then uh, what's the other guy's name? The, the sexy, long-haired, uh, luscious guy that Doug's coaching. What's his name? Trevor uh, Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, you know, yeah. the, the Greek god that's down there at the Jaguars. He's coming along, too. So, you know, Doug's feeding him all the ice cream he can handle, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're doing but it, but good But that's, that's, that's the thing about the schedule, and that's the thing that bothered me. Like, listen, the schedule is what it is, and last year was, well, that's an easy schedule. Yeah. Schedule is what it is. The, the NFL does it. It's based upon your previous record. I don't want to hear anything about the schedule. And I'm going to say the same thing going into this season. Is mm -hmm. it a tougher schedule on paper? Absolutely. But you know what? I want this team tested. I want to see this team go against the best teams in the NFL. That's number one. Number two is just because it was tough teams last year does not mean that it's going to be tough teams this year. Just like bad teams, all of a sudden somebody look at the NFC East. Every yeah. well, every year somebody else wins it. It's a rotating thing. You never know which teams that were at the back end of the draft are going to all of a sudden move themselves up to be division winners. And you're never going to anticipate what teams won the division, went to the playoffs last year, but all of a sudden, just for one reason or another, injury. I don't know, but all of a sudden, sell off. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So a- every game is its own individual game. Every season is its own in- individual season. I am looking forward to seeing this team get tested. They're one of the best teams in the league. I want to see them going up against best teams in the league so that when playoff time comes and they've got that four or five at max losses and but all those wins, they have the confidence to go into the playoffs going, all right, slide them up. We yeah. are, we already we already played the best. Just slide them up. Yep. And that, and that's exactly what I expect to happen. Uh so I, I they were trying to do the Howie parade and I, I told like two years ago, I'm like, hit me in twenty twenty four and then we could do a Howie parade. So we're we're coming up on Howie Parade season for me. Uh, the last two three years now he has righted his ship, so I'm willing. Yeah. I'm willing to. I mean, throw a little Howie party. You know what I mean, I'm, I still want one more draft out of him. I, I want one more draft to solidify that Howie is is focusing in on the right point. Um, let me ask you. I know uh, uh, you, everyone was talking about it. The Trey Turner standing ovation thing. What, what, what's your mindset on, on uh, giving a guy who's struggling a stand and O here in Philadelphia? I do it just like I, I, I said. Jack was talking about it on the air. And I chimed in, and I want to preface this by saying the Phillies, as I'm watching them right now, the Phillies are not my wheelhouse. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I watch, I root on. I'm not an expert at baseball, but I am I am a quasi expert in Philadelphia fandom. <laughs> and so, something that you know, Jack was talking about this new fan, and it's going to change the culture of the fan. I, I'm not sure that it will. When I look at a guy like Trey Turner, it, it, it to me it has to do with accountability. And players in this city, whether they know it or not, will alienate or endear themselves to the fan base based purely upon accountability. One of the reasons why Joel Embiid right now is having a, such a hard time with the fan base, and the fan base is a little bit... Sixers fan, if I'm gauging the temperature, you can speak on it more than I can. Oh, I'm not happy. We are not yeah. happy. We are I. But it, we are not but happy. It, <laughs> but isn't it a isn't it a case of accountability? Like, yo, dude, you're the guy. You have to be responsible for this team. You're the star player. You're the MVP. Like when Trey Turner is taking batting practice after a game until midnight, when he's up there in front of the bright light saying, "You know what? I cost this team a game, and this one's it, it's me. It's me. I have to be better." When Jalen Hurt, it's part of the reason we fell in love with Jalen Hurts. Last year is even though, and let's not forget, last year was rough. Okay, it's it's yeah. it's it, the last year was. When I say last year, I'm not talking about the Super Bowl year. I'm talking yes. about the year prior to that. Yep. You know, a lot of a, a lot of that. I mean, those first seven games were some of the worst Eagles football I've ever seen in my life. That's how that's how bad it was. Well, we the- we, we we quick to forget because recency bias, but we're quick to forget. But he. Day in, day out, after the games, was out there in front of the podium, taking the hard questions, going like I, taking accountability, and but like we're close, we're close, we're gonna get there, and I'm gonna lead them there, lead us there. It's part of the reason we fell in love with the guy. So you again, that was something else we tweeted back and forth about. That word is the key word to the whole situation: accountability. Yes. Now I, I listen. I, I listen to the Clap Your Hands podcast. And I'm like, well, Joel's probably upset because he's not getting that kind of treatment, bro. You got standing ovations. You got us cheering you on. You got people defending you with knives in their back for five or six years straight. And at right. every turn, it was, well, Brown sucked as a coach, and well, you traded away the guy that I liked, and you kept Tobias, and well, Ben didn't shoot the ball, and uh, the ball didn't get to me. Every year when you would fail and be injured you'd put the blame on someone else trey turner comes here and he's like yo bro my mom called me and told me i sucked he didn't have to say it out loud he's like i i i lost us the game just the the taking the accountability gives you that buffer with fans They're like yo because yeah everybody's worked a job have you not messed up on your job have you not been in a quote-unquote slump everybody's had a bad day a bad week at their job but if it's on you and you own it like, hey, boss, hey, man, I messed up. My fault. I'm going right. to get it together. I'm going to fix it. Your boss looks at you like, okay. As opposed to your boss is like, how come every time something goes wrong, you make an excuse and put it on, you know, Jim got fired last week. So what, what's the issue now? You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're still trying to find somebody. And that makes someone feel a certain kind of way. That's why, like you said, Jalen Hurts gets unlimited uh, uh, love and respect now because even through that rough period, he kept saying the cliche, cookie cutter, right words, standing there, taking all the questions, taking all the vitriol. And his key word that year was, put it on me. Starts with me. Got to do better. Put it on me. 
Red stew. Whatever yeah, fortune, stew. whatever fortune, fortune cookie yeah. saying you want to put on it. Jalen Hurts was saying it, but not only saying it, but ba- backing it up with it. his work and, and, and yeah, and doing it. And that's why I love Bryce Harper, the sexiest man in baseball, uh, MV3, my guy. I love him to death. He's just a guy who goes out there and goes to work. You know what I mean? From from a guy who could, a punk phenom who said, "Oh, he's not a good player." I mean, not a good um teammate and all that kind of stuff he comes here and oh it's pandering well I, I, it's in his blood now he does everything he's supposed to do he says right. the right things he takes right. accountability for when things are bad and he he shields his his teammates as much as he can because that's what you're supposed to do and that's the reason why you stand with trey even though he's a new guy and he doesn't deserve it yet from philadelphia because he just got here well guess what when when somebody moves into new in your neighborhood, you know what I mean, they forget to put their trash out on trash day. You go knock on their door the next week and be like, yo, bro, remember trash day is on Thursday. Let me help you out so your house ain't funky for a week. You try to give people <laughs> some help. I I know you love my analogy, Dad. That's that's what I do. I'm I, you know what I mean. I, I see how creative you are on social media. This is where I'm creative out here there spitting this stupid stuff. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just I, I had no problem with it. And as far as the new fans, yeah. like, bro. Again, it's still Philadelphia. I, yeah. I know as much as people want to complain, like when the Vikings came here and they're like, they leave and like, it's such a bad town. It's such a bad city. Well, you shouldn't have came here with your purple Nopa shirts on, going out to my Rocky steps, going in to order pizzas and act crazy and, and, and talking trash everywhere you went, walking around town. Because guess what? Now I got the internet. And I just saw you for the last three days when you're visiting. Talking trash. You know what you do? You come here, you order a cheesesteak, you go back to your room, you come to the game, you shut up, you leave. When you're the 49ers and, and your billion dollar brother's about to get his butt rocked and you're out there with your mommy in line and you can't take hecklers, what are you doing? What are you yeah. doing? You should be above someone talking trash to you. I know you've heard worse. I've seen your haircut. Okay. Like <laughs> there's just something about Philadelphia that's never not going to be Philadelphia. If you say yeah. the wrong thing, you're going to find out like the Montgomery Riverfront boat ride <laughs> that things can go bad for you very quickly. So chairs are coming. Cha- chairs uh, yeah. are coming. Hey, look, I, I keep my Alabama slam. I got three of them right here in the studio because you never know. You know, I got one on the front porch like a pit bull, brother, because you <laughs> never know. Um, so, but but it's I, but it's always, it, it, it's always like, listen, I I agree with you a hundred percent. I don't think Philadelphia is ever going to lose their edge. They're always they're always going to take shit personally when you when you're acting up or talking reckless and 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 you know, ask the Vikings fans as you brought up. Ask the 49ers fans, as you brought up. But also, too, it, it, it never... The older I get, the more, it, it never ceases to amaze me. Like, to unlock the Philadelphia fan, it's not a it's not a secret. There's no secret formula, okay? It's, it's work hard, take accountability, give it your all. Then when you take a look at a Brian Dawkins, or a Jason Kelsey, or a Brandon Graham, or a Bryce Harper, or a Chase Utley... Or a, or a, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of a flyer off the top, but, but or an AI, you know what I mean? Back it, yeah. give it your, give it your all, take accountability, and just we we want to see you be honest. Yeah. We want to see you give it and your all and be honest about it. And when you f up, say it, express it. It's one of the things that there was disconnect between Donovan McNabb and the city. People out of town can't understand why. Why, why did the city of Philadelphia have a problem with Donovan McNabb? Because that dude's over on the sidelines smiling after he threw an interception. I'm yeah. not smiling. You see this face? Am I smiling right now? Why is he smiling? Yeah. You know what and I mean? It, that that was the disconnect. And it, and it was a disconnect that they had in the locker room with him. So it wasn't mm-hmm. just the fans don't know what's going on. Bro, a guy came here for a year and the locker room was divided. You've been here for a, 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 damn near a decade and then did so much for the team, and there was still an issue where half the team was like, nah, bro, you're wrong. That means that there's yeah. something wrong with you that which right. us as the fans could feel in the 700 yeah. level looking down at you. So it's not like yeah. – and again, to what, to what Jack said, like I don't need dudes going to jail. I don't need a jail in yeah. my stadium anymore to be hardcore, no, to that. be tough or whatever. And uh, I've traveled – you know what I mean, like I said, I'm in these streets. You're in these streets almost as much as me, if not more to me. But you've been to a lot of other states, other states. People are getting in fights all the time. People are doing dumb stuff. I mean, at our open practice, we had a dude come out there with his little uh, cute uh, baby uh, 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 cowboy's blankie 
And then we had the Giants guy come out there looking like Thunderbutt with the number 91 stretched out at the bottom. That 91 looked like it had four feet, bro. That thing was wide, dude. I mean, again, I can say that. I'm a big dude. He, he was two and a half of me out there. He looked like he was a few snacks away from not making it up them stairs. But they want to come out yeah. and, and rile people up and do what they yeah. do. You would never catch us at a Cowboys open practice. Like, yeah. We're just not uh, – no, we don't care enough. You know what I mean? Unless it's a real game, which we invade every city and nation that we would ever go to. You know what I mean? Coast to we, coast, let's we we, go. We, 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 because uh, that's a game. Yes. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Because that's a game. We fly out. I mean, <laughs> I, I've i thought about – you know, because we're, we're both content creators, right? So we're always trying to figure out new and creative ways to engage in a conversation or bring something new to the table. And I briefly – and I can't stress briefly enough, had the thought, uh, you know, what if I went to Giants? Because their training camps are open. What if I went to Giants camp and I wore my Eagles jersey and I just filmed it for content and thought, you know, just to see what would happen. And that thought, as soon as it entered my brain, exited my brain because forget what the Giants fans would say. My own people would be clowning me worse than Giants fans. Like, I don't need to read the room. I've lived yeah. in the room. Yeah. I know the room. They'd be like, E, what are you doing? You're making us all look like jerk offs. Why, like, why you're embarrassing us? Why would you do that? So, this dude wheezing his way up the steps at Lincoln Financial Field, wearing a dusty, worn out, <laughs> just ask Santa. Get, yeah. get a, get a, does nobody love you where uh, you can get a new jersey instead of a instead of a 91 Justin Tuck jersey? Yeah. Go yeah. in there just for internet clout. You would not catch an Eagles fan doing because we police our own and I would be getting more unfollows than I would internet clout if I ever pulled that shit. And my favorite thing about that moment with him was like he's sitting out there with his phone and he's obviously like talking trash. And, and the, again, when you instigate a crowd of people, look at all the restraint that they had. Because I'm like, dude, you're yeah. sitting there talking trash, whatever you're saying, you know what I mean, throwing birds up at people, whatever you're trying. Wh- what is your end goal? Is your goal to get smacked in the face with an empty beer can? Is it to you know have somebody say something about your mom where you start crying? Like, what is the goal of doing that? Because you're trying to entice the some kind of reaction yeah. like we already hate you bro you know what it is you know you're gonna get booed why are yeah. you here why are you here so yes they're, you, they're trying to get some philly fan that maybe had too many beers to drink to go yep. and swing on them and then and then people can point and look at uh, they they poke the oh uh, jesus christ I, I know they poke the bear they go and they come to our city and they threaten to take over the stadium which is never gonna happen nope it's never happened in the, the history of Lincoln Financial Field, but they come, we're going to take over your stadium and we're going to go to the Rocky Steps and we're going to do our stompy, stompy clap thing. And then we're going to go where there's 49 of the fight. We're going to go desecrate the statue. I've traveled with multiple groups and gone to multiple away games. Never in our wildest, it, it never crossed our mind that, hey, how about we take this Eagles jersey and put it up on probably the most famous statue, whatever city you live in, your most famous statue, and we're gonna we're gonna climb on it and chant our bullshit. And the thought never even crossed our mind. But what they do is they try to poke the bear. They try to poke the bear. They try, and then when they get their head bitten off by the bear, what do they do? They turn around and cross. Are they did it. Oh if they did it to Santa, they'll do it to us. Like I'm like this nine-year-old kid told me to suck his dick. I can't <laughs> believe it. How uh, could this happen? But that, that well, actually, that's that's what we should do. Just let the kids handle it. You know what I mean? Our, <laughs> the, one of the proudest moments in my life was, you know, again, my daughter uh, has. We, I haven't taken her to a game yet. She's finally into football. She wants to go to a game. But we've always watched football. It's in darkness. She knows the deal. Like she knows it's. Philadelphia first and screw everybody else. So we're at the grocery store and uh, we're in line. I'm ordering stuff. And she looks up at the girl at the counter and she's like, I feel so sorry for you. And I look down. I'm like, what? And the lady's like, what? And the girl's like 19. And my daughter's like, you're wearing a Giants uh, uh, jersey. Like, aren't you, aren't you embarrassed? And I'm like, oh. And the girl looked at me. She's like, 
Ew, she's like, shit. are you just going to let your daughter talk to me like that? I'm like, I'm just, she trash talking. I mean, it's sports. Like, yeah. what do you want me to do? And my daughter's yeah. like, she's like, this is Eagle country. You should invest in doing better for yourself. And she was four years old and I was never more proud of her. Cause I was like, and you can't say nothing cause she's a child. So you have to take this and <laughs> deal yeah. with it and talk shit when take we leave. Yourself. Cause yeah. you can't and say nothing. We- Don't you say nothing about my nope. child in my face. You know what I'm saying? No. And, oh man, no. I was so happy. I was like, oh. You're the best child in America, so uh, you should let that's, these kids that's quality handle it. Parent, that's quality parenting yeah, right there. We'll let Hats these kids handle it. So uh, yeah. let's uh, let's let's uh, we're almost done. We're wrapping it up. Uh, your top five quarterbacks for this season in your mind going forward. Who do you think are going to be the top five quarterbacks? You, you want me to go first? Yes. Okay. So uh, number one MVP uh, Jalen Hurts. Second Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes for life for as long as he plays until he gets old is first or second. Um, then I'm going to give it to, uh, I throw, uh, uh, 30,000 interceptions, uh, Josh Allen. Cause I think he's going to try and step up. Then it's Burrow. Burrow could interchange with Allen anytime he wants to. And number five is golf. I think golf is going to have a phenomenal year. He also is in the trash Panda NFC, the division and, uh, Rogers is gone and Kirk Cousins is still Ned Flanders. And I feel like the Lions are ready to bite some of these kneecaps off. Finally, last year he came on like gangbusters at the end. They lost a lot of close games. So golf is my number five. I I would uh, flip flop Hertz and Mahomes. Mahomes is just a different animal. I know. And, 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 and he's know. just a different animal. He, 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 he's cerebral and he can throws things and his dad you know being the pitcher and, and growing up playing baseball he's just able to do things that forget Jalen Hurts he's he's able to do things that most quarterbacks in NFL history simply could never do the greats of the game cannot do so I would go Mahomes one uh Jalen Hurts two I agree with the Burrow and Allen thing you could flip flop those three and four fifth fifth I, I, I don't I, I don't want to give it to golf. I I, I, I would <laughs> I mean you can throw Herbert in there, you can throw Lawrence in there. I mean there's there are other things. I'm just saying I I, think... I, I, I thought about I thought about Lawrence. I I'll, I'll give it to Herbert, although Herbert's losing me. Her, Herbert's slowly losing me. But I I'll, I'll I'll tell you who is I, I've got my eye on. And I'm like, man, if this if this could pan out, uh, Justin Fields in Chicago. Mm, okay. I just invested some weapons into him. And listen, if he takes even a half of a Jalen Hurts leap. Yeah. Which, by the way, isn't it funny that, like, glad, again, two seasons ago, I keep calling He's, it last season. He can't even take ago, a Josh Allen leap. Now it's the now it's the Hurts leap. <laughs> now it's the Hurts, Hurts leap. So Fields can take half, I think even half of a Jalen Hurts leap. Uh, the Chicago Bears all of a sudden, again, one of those teams that we were talking about, weak schedule, strong schedule, you look at it and you yeah. go, oh, look at the bear. Oh, where'd the Bears come from? Uh, so I, he's not cracking any sort of top five list for me, but I am silently in the corner watching that kid play. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch him play. Okay, so before we hit the last topic, let me just tell you something, because we're deep in the show. Nobody's here yet. I mean, it's, they're gone by now. But let me tell you something. Yeah, it's okay. For, it's this, just us. for this year... Jalen Hurts is an NFC. Mahomes got to see Burrow, Lamar, Herbert, uh, uh, Allen, uh, the long-haired lock guy. He hit. He he's got to go through the Avengers. My guy has to go hang out with yeah. Dak Prescott and Kirk Cousins and go. So I'm just saying for this year, the way he'll be able Daniel to stand Jones. out. <laughs> Daniel Jones. I don't want you to even bring Daniel Jones up. You see what I'm saying? Who's the quarterback in Washington? I don't even know. So what I'm saying I don't even is, know the guy's name. So what I'm saying I don't know is, the guy's name. for this year, I'm 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 trying to just, just I'm I'm bumping my homes down for this year, and I'm giving my guy an MVP because though he and he does get to play some of those guys to solidify himself up in that rank, because that was was not true. Well, he didn't have to play at Mahomes. He didn't have to play at Allen. So he's going to get to play those guys to get his cred up. But Mahomes got to go through through the Avengers every year. And and, and throw Aaron Rodgers in there, too. Come on, baby. Somebody's just going to take him down a little bit and give my guy that little bump for this year. That's why I'm putting him in number one. Someone's going to take him down a little bit, but Mahomes at any time could pull that Thanos (sighs) snap and just, he's that good. You make me sick because you're right, and I can't stand it. (laughs) (laughs) I know you're right, but shut up and listen to what I'm telling you. (laughs) This year, it's going to be the, we won't do it. I got it. All right, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So the last thing. Um, yeah. the running back position in the NFL, right? It makes me sick. I 
hate what they're doing to these running backs. Jim Ursay, that pill popping, having stuff in his briefcase in the middle of the night, doing 100 miles an hour guy out here trying to kidnap a running back and make him stay there is so insane to me. But who would want their kid to be a running back? Who would nobody? If you're if you're in high school right now, Pee Wee, like why would you subject go safety cornerback wide receiver, the and you can't but you can't get rid of that position. No one touches the ball more than the quarterback and the running back. But you want to pay these guys a million dollars after you run them into the ground, and unless you are a Saquon Barkley and got that forty million dollar deal, you're coming in third fourth round, but putting out twelve hundred yards and you're only getting paid eight hundred dollars, which is basically minimum wage and they take your yeah. best golden years because you're in that rookie contract you can't go anywhere then they wear you down and then the guy says well i'll give you a million bucks i think something has to change about it what, what do you think or you just think it's part of the game it is what it is i i, I think it's a, it is one of the uh, more unfortunate evolutions of the game you know i, I haven't played fantasy football oh my god and been probably a decade but i remember like you know the first round of a 10 team league used to be all running backs you yeah. know it was all running backs and running backs were, were the premier when you thought you think about the marshall fox and 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 so on and so forth i'll tell you i'll tell you when it started the when when i think the league went uh-oh is when all of a sudden you had a guy like sean alexander mm. Or Larry Johnson putting mm -hmm. up ridiculous numbers, and then one year just the wheels fall, yeah, the fall, fall off. off, fall off. And then when you start to get the era of analytics, and they actually take a dive inside the numbers, how many carries? There's a magical number. Did you notice? There's a magical yeah. number of carries that a running back will have until the wheels just all of a sudden, in a blink of an eye, fall right the hell off. It's uh, it, you can set your watch to it. So it's an evolution of the game. I don't know what the answer is. I heard somebody suggest they should have like a, not a guaranteed contract, but sort of a, you know how they have the rookie wage scale? There should be a running back wage scale. But I don't, I, I can't see how you single out a particular position. And in the CBA, the Players Association negotiates on behalf of running backs and running backs exclusively to get this up the, and then the rest of the position. You can't do that because then the rest of the positions are going to be like, well, what the hell, dude? You're supposed to be representing all of us and now you're trying to fight for these running backs. I think it's just an evolution of the game. Teams have realized that, listen, I can go grab a running back in the second, third, fourth round, plug him in. I don't even got to pay him when he when his contract's up because he's going to be, again, two years away from that magical number. Or he's going to have to just... It's, it's just... I think it's one of those unfortunate things that the league is that players are just going to have to, I, I don't know the, I, I don't know a, a, an alternative. So uh, to jump on f fantasy, I think last time I played fantasy, I was on Marks and Reese and that was like the first time I played in 10 years myself. I, I realized once I started rooting for teams that I hate, cause I love football. I love sports and I, and I, yeah. I've got Peyton Manning jerseys. Like I've got jerseys of all kinds of greats, you know, uh, Ricky Williams, all kinds of no one in my division, but when I would get stuck having to pick someone in my division and then it, Week by week, I'm trying to like, I need you to get touchdowns and I'm rooting for you. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I I can't because at some point you end up with somebody in the division. And right. that, that's where I don't live. I, outside of the division, I can understand greatness. If you're in my division, I don't care what you do. You're, you're a trash panda. But as far as the running backs are concerned, like I want the Ryan Leaf old days to come back. Like if you're a running back and you pick in the first three rounds, you get a guaranteed set amount of money for four years. And if you're in the fourth round on, they should allow you to get out of your rookie contract sooner. The rookie contract should only be for two years and there should be like some kind of minimum. And yes, what you said makes no sense because they wouldn't do that, but there should be a running backs only negotiation because they're messing with the game and the legacy of football. And I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. The last thing I want is uh, some kind of revolt or, or people like boycotting and picket lining, and, yeah. and no, we don't have we don't have that problem because Howie's already at bargain basement it, and hunting. It, but it's not it, it's not going to happen. It's good. So what you just suggested, okay, uh, if you're picked in the first three rounds, you should be on a rookie wage scale. Guess where all the running backs are going to be taken in the fourth round? You know, what I mean, it, 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 the NFL GMs are just going to circumvent any sort of thing that you that you do unless it's a you know, a stellar running back, and they're like, listen, we got to take him in the second. But most people are going to, there's going to be ways to get around everything that you're, that you're talking about. And, and, and that's, you know, and maybe the answer's out there. I'm not saying the answer isn't out there. I just haven't come up with it 
yet or or heard a, heard a good like oh okay that would that, yeah you know what that would absolutely work um it's just it's just one of those things and listen all right you're not getting paid the same amount of money as a quarterback or a wide receiver or a or anyone you're the lowest paid position and they're running you into the ground like a like they're just grinding you out that's why we don't have fullbacks anymore like but they're killing a dude that touches the ball the second most amount of time and i didn't have you on this show to make me look bad with your rational reasonable thoughts okay <laughs> that is not why i had you on here and i'm glad it's all the way to the end of the show because nobody's still watching and i don't have to suffer through you making sense i need you on my team i need you to support these running backs okay we're gonna yeah. lose to you E, we're about to lose the youth. I'm not going to have a running back in 10 years. I'm going to point back to the show and the because you didn't back me up. <laughs> and that's why we don't have we're, John Rich is the last fullback I know besides all stat. Where do they all go? They're like dinosaurs in the wind, E, and you're not backing yes. me up. We need help out here. They need support, all right? You need support. Uh, I'm with you. I agree with you. I appreciate 100%. it. Thank you for letting me Philadelphia bully you into a couple of things. Like I said, I, I, I forgot. I knew you were smart. You're going to have to make it sense. I, I don't like sense, okay? I'm a passion guy. <laughs> I, I like ranting about things that don't make no sense. Uh, what do you got going on in the world? What, what do you want to promote in the, in, the, in the comments for you and put down there what you got going on? What you, what you doing fun uh, this year? The, the, the big thing I got going on this year is, is I'm on my third year partnering with Philly Sports Trips. Uh, absolutely phenomenal owner, Vince, uh, and, and a phenomenal group. And, you know, I partnered with other travel groups and I could tell you that this one is by far the best. Everything they do is top notch. And most importantly, their customer service is absolutely phenomenal. I'll be DJing the tailgate up there in New England when uh, Tom Brady's game, which I know was an expensive Sweet. ticket, but Philly fans of Boston are putting together a watch party. I'll be DJing the tailgate if you can make it up there. And that's the other thing that Philly Sports Trips does. Like, if you're a local fan, you know, and the Eagles are coming to your city, they are very welcoming of including you. Just because you're traveling, you're not traveling with them and you're not purchasing your airfare or your hotel because you already live there. They still want to, be, you know, cater to you. So if you're up in the uh, New England area, we'd love to see you there. Week two, I'll actually be DJing the, the home opener, which if I'm going to bitch about anything about the schedule, it's not who we're playing. It's just they boned us on the home opener. <sighs> man. Yeah. The home opener is a block party. It's a festival. It's an annual festival of Philadelphia football celebration. And they put it on the worst tailgating night of the year. That's Thursday night football. So I've opted into, hey, listen, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go party it up with Philly Sports Trips. I'll be DJing that tailgate. And then, of course, the big one is down to Tampa, flying down to Tampa. We got this whole beach bash planned. We're going to be joined by David Akers, Hollis Thomas, Vince Papali, and some more surprise guests. Um, I'll be DJing that tailgate as well. So check them out, phillysportstrips.com. Come see your boy E-Rock partying it up. And uh, look forward to seeing you all out there. Sweet. I will definitely link to all those events. Uh, one one last thing too that killed me about the schedule. Yeah, all, all of our games are late games. Like, do they not understand? I'm, people are usually getting drunk by four a.m. and you want me to sit around till four twenty-five kickoffs all year long. Like, do you know yeah. how rowdy these games are going to get? Like, obviously you know what I'm saying. You're yeah. you're literally forcing me for four extra hours because people aren't not going to get there at six a.m. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. It's yeah. still going. It's I'm still going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm like, man, why do we have all these late starts? But that's the 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 benefit of being an elite team and making it to the Super Bowl and yeah. more prime time events and you know, like you I said. I think we have like what, three one o'clock games? And yeah. listen, that that shit that shit was cool when I was younger. They got night games, party all day, and stuff like that. I'm an old man now. I'm an old head now. I like waking up before the sun comes up. I like being on the beach fishing. I like driving down there. Being there five five thirty, I'm giving myself a generous <laughs> time slot. Uh, you know, like four thirty in the morning to reserve the parking spots and be in line. I want to be one of the first ten in line, so we, you know, I reserve the parking spots for the family and get the tailgate all set up. And then I like going the hell home. Yes, and catching the end of the four o'clock games and being home at wars for football night in America so I can at least get like what happened during the day and yeah. watch Sunday night football in peace in not my this recliner. Year. Not this year. It's so it's not gonna this be, year, man. It's gonna be so weird. Uh thanks for being on. I appreciate you so much. Like I said, I'll link all the stuff for E. He's all over the internet. Uh uh 
finally dressed in all the Eagles merch that you can't afford or get anymore because you <laughs> bought all of it. Thanks for your hair. Later. <laughs>